Welcome to this presentation about PJACRAW, a high-performance connection pool for Postgres. My name is Jasper Peterson, and I work for Red Hat. In this talk, we'll explore the architecture of PJACRAW, and thereby which user visible features that can be implemented. We'll briefly look at how to do a deployment and the functionality of the management tools. Next, we'll take a look at a performance runs against other Postgres connection pools. And last, we'll explore the roadmap of PJACRAL and close with some thoughts. PJACRAL is written in C and released under the three clause BSD license. Let's start with the question What is a connection pool? First, a connection pool must provide database connections to clients. Second, it provides a central access point to a database cluster. So, a connection pool is an advanced proxy to one or more database instances, and based on its features, it can perform authentication, pool connections in order to limit the overhead when a client can obtains a connection, and provide additional services around connection management. Of course, adding a connection pool adds an extra layer in the overall system architecture, so its benefit needs to be weighted against the extra complexity and management. The overall architecture of PJAGRAL is process-based. This means that if a client cl crash a connection, it won't take the, down the entire pool, as only the client process is terminated. Using a process model means that we need to have a shared memory model in order to maintain state across all processes. PJAGRAL uses libEV for its network communication. libEV is a fast network library that support different event mechanisms. The state of PJAGRAL is maintained using atomic operations, so a modern compiler is required to build the project. The Postgres native protocol is used for all communication, which is implemented inside PJAGRAL, so no dependencies is required for this. So the only dependencies are libEV and OpenSSL for the runtime. This is an overall picture of the PGRGRAL architecture. On the left, we have clients connecting to PGRGRAL that are implemented using different programming languages. They will interact with the security layer that defines how they will authenticate. Each client will be a process noted by C1 to C4, and the shared memory model will maintain state. PGRGRAL will communicate with Postgres using another security layer. We'll expand on these concepts in the following slides and look at the component breakdowns. First, the shared memory structure is the central data structure for PJACRAL. It is an MMAP memory segment shared across all processes that contain the overall configuration and state of PJACRAL. This includes the configuration settings from the deployment, the state of each of the connections done as an atomic sign char, information about the Postgres service, limits and access control, known users, and the data structure for the connections. This structure gives all the processes a unified view of the runtime state of the entire system. For security, we have two different layers, one layer towards Postgres and one layer for the connecting clients. In PGI-GRAL, we can configure authentication for the clients using different modules, which are trust, accept without a password. We can reject the connection, and then we have three different modes which requires a connection from the, from the client. These are password, which is plain text, MD5, and finally, scram share, which is the more secure method. Last. There's all, which will use the same authentication mechanism as Postgres for the user database pair. So this setup provides us with the flexibility to, for example, use Scram Share for the clients, but use MD5 or even Trust when authenticating against Postgres. Password management is done based on a master key that is unique 
for all user stores. Each store uses symmetric encryption using EIS-256. Clients can communicate with PGI Crawl using Transport Layer Security version 1.2 or 1.3 for added security. All security functionality is implemented using the OpenSSL library version 1.0 or higher. During authentication, we need a connection, and this is where the pool component comes into play. The pool maintains the state of each of the connections. It provides an API to the rest of the system, like getting a connection, returning a connection, or even kiddling a connection. It also has methods for management operations. The connections are done as a flexible member array such that only the memory required for the specified maximum number of connections is allocated. This keeps the overall memory requirements for PGI crawl down. But having a connection pool isn't enough, as we may need to limit the number of connections available to a specific user or database. A limit rule will define a user, a database, or both and the number of available connection to the rule. The pool will choose the batch matching rule and allocate a connection based on that criteria. The uh, number of active connections is maintained with an atomic unsigned short. This allows us to split the overall pool size into smaller subpools and better control resources used for users and databases. For all of this to work, we need to be able to communicate with both clients and Postgres itself using the version 3 of the Postgres protocol. PGI Crawl needs all message type during startup and when authenticating using the different authentication mechanisms. Each process has a fixed memory buffer which is used for communication. This means that we can allocate it in a static variable. The actual communication is done through an API that supports socket-based communication or SSL-based communication. Each client is a process and it follows the same steps. First, it needs to authenticate where it will obtain a connection from the pool. If successful, it will set up a pipeline instance, which we'll come back to. Next is the interaction between the client and Postgres through PJAC raw. Once done, the connection is either returned to the pool or killed. Last, the process exits. So what is a pipeline? The pipeline instance defines the behavior of the interaction of the client to PJAC raw and from PGI Graal to Postgres. There are currently two different pipelines in PGI Graal. The first one is a performance pipeline which only looks for, the, for a terminate message from the client and a fatal error from Postgres. This makes the pipeline extremely fast as there's very little overhead. The second pipeline is a session pipeline which is like the performance one but also support TLS. The pipeline instance is triggered based on events from Leap EV. These events are created based on the status of the underlying network. There are different ways that these events are triggered, for example, through select or epoll mechanisms. Last, we have management of the pool. This is done over a Unix domain socket using a specific tool. The management layer allows the, the client process to send its socket descriptors to the parent process in order to transfer ownership. The management layer also allows for, the, for management operations to be implemented such as flush, enable disable a database, getting the status of the pool, or performing shutdown. Now that we have gone through the architecture of PGI Crawl, we can write a user-visible feature set. 
PG Crawl is of course a connection pool with trust, password, MD5, MSCA, MSCA security functionality. It supports authentication, pre-fill, and pooling of connections. It can limit connection based on either database plus user, user only, database only, or by the general pool. TLS is supported between clients and PG Crawl. We can pre-fill the pool during startup and maintain a, a minimum number of connections based on a database and user pair. This requires a user vault to be specified. Idle connections can be removed after the specified number of seconds or turned off. In order to account for invalid connections, we can perform connection validation either when a connection is obtained by the pool or in the background on idle connections. We can also turn this functionality off. Access to a database can be turned off and enabled again. And we can perform either graceful shutdown, which allows all existing clients to finish, or a fast shutdown that will do the shutdown at once. PJAC Roll can run in daemon mode, allowing it to be run in the background. User vaults are done using a master key and AES-256 symmetric encryption. And there is a runtime tool to control PJAC Roll and an administration tool to create the master key and the vaults. Here we can see the options to run pjacrawl. There's the configuration file, which contain how pjacrawl is configured and how the Postgres instance is accessed. There's the host-based access file, which defines how client connect and which network masks are allowed. Next, there's the definition of the limits for each database and user. This file is optional. Last, there's the file that defines all the known users. This file is also optional. Let's do a simple configuration. Check our website for the full details of these files. The first file is pjackroll.conf, which contains the main configuration. The main section is called pjackroll. We bind port 2345 on all network interfaces. We will do locking to a file at info level. There will be a maximum of 100 connection that has an idle timeout value of 10 minutes. Validation is off and we will specify the Unix socket directory. Next we'll define a section called primary, which will be a local Postgres instance running on port 5432. The next file is the host-based access file called pjagral underscore hba.conf. We'll let Alice connect using Gramsha from all networks. Bob is restricted to the 10 network, but will use MD5. All other users will use the same mechanism that Postgres will be using. The pjagral underscore databases.conf file shows that Alice and Bob both will have five connections pre-fiddled each and they can use a maximum of 10 each. The remaining connections, 80, will be used for all other users. Now we need to generate the pjagral underscore users Dot con file. First, we need to set the master key using the pjagral admin tool. The master key must be eight characters long, used at least one uppercase letter, at least one lowercase letter, 
at least one number and at least one special character. Once the master key is set, we can add Alice and Bob with their passwords. We can now run pjacrawl with the configurations file we just created. The log file shows that pjacrawl has started. We can now use a Postgres client like psql to connect to pjacrawl. Once Alice is done, the connection will be put back into the pool. The pjacrawl CLI tool provides the management operations like flushing the pool, enabling, disabling one or more databases. It also allows you to see the status of the pool and shut it down. The administration tool is pjacrawl at admin and it creates the master key and the user vaults. Now we'll take a look at the performance of pjacrawl. The tests are run on Red Hat Enterprise Server 7.7 .7 based machines on a 10G network. We'll compare pjacrawl against three other connection pools, which we'll call A, B, and C. The same identifier will be used in all graphs. The version used were the latest on January 14, 2020, and all of them were configured with performance in mind. The tests were run using the pgbench tool. but please run your own benchmarks. The first graph is pgbench using the prepared mode. The x-axis is the number of clients and the y-axis is the number of transactions per second. The second graph is pgbench with the prepared and read-only mode. Again, the x-axis is the number of clients and the y-axis is the number of transactions per second. The first thing that is important to note is the increase in transactions per second compared to the other pools, which means that pjacrawl can drive more load towards Postgres. The second thing that is important is that pjacrawl can reach a transaction per second value a lot sooner than the other pools. This could mean that a much smaller machine can be used for the pjacrawl deployment in order to drive the same load. Looking at performance in general, pjacrawl will use around 5 megabytes of RSS memory and the overhead of each connection is around 67 kilobytes. This means that pjacrawl has a very small memory footprint. Due to the libEV event mechanism and the fixed network buffer, there's, there are basically zero allocations at runtime in pjacrawl itself. This means that pjacrawl is very cloud friendly as it uses a limited number of resources to manage the connections and it scales well using the CPU resources available. In the future there will be a IOU ring module for libEV which should make pjacrawl faster. This will require a Linux 5.6 or later kernel. The next release of pjacrawl will be 0 0.7, which will have Prometheus support for monitoring and remote management 
such that administrator doesn't have to log into the machine. Of course, there will be other improvement and bug fixes as well. Check the release notes once it is out. The roadmap for PJAC RAL is maintained on our GitHub account and contains features like failover support in order to promote a replica instance to a primary instance, a high availability setup where multiple instances of PJAC RAL work together as one pool, support for running selects on replicas if the transaction is read only, a transaction pipeline that returns the connection after each transaction has ended, and a query cache. Check the Issues tab and vote. So if you found this talk interesting, feel free to try out PJAC Roll yourself and do your own performance benchmark in order to see how it compares to your existing connection pool deployment. If you like what you see, give the project a star on GitHub and follow us on Twitter. You can vote for features or create a new feature request if something is missing. And of course, contribute. Every contribution to the project is most welcome as we move towards building an advanced connection pool implementation for Postgres. Thank you for your time and hope to see you in the PJ Acral community. And we're live now for a Q&A session with Jesper. Jesper, you please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so there was a couple of questions during my session about PJAC Raw. And uh, the first one was uh, what the uh, major differences was between PJAC Raw and the other pools out there. And I would say that uh, one of the major is, uh, differences is that uh, PJAC Raw is, is process-based. Um, which Basic takes a lot of how the architecture is done in China. Um, then there was a question about um, what are the pooling modes um, PJAC RAL currently has. And um, currently we own uh, session pooling, but uh, transaction pooling is on the roadmap. Um, then there was a question about uh, let's see if um, the command line rules could be scripted um, to uh, be scraped for monitoring jobs, such as uh, permits. And um, actually, the uh, 7 release just went out yesterday, which has native Prometheus support um, on its own internal server. Uh, the um, the C tool has a human readable uh, format, of course, both in in brief mode and in more else. Um, and then the question about why Jack Raw can't do select and replica at the moment. Um, it's currently on the roadmap, um, but there's definitely a lot to consider around this functionality. Um, we have to have a read only transaction, but we also have to consider stuff like uh, location lag and the parameters around that based on, on the user. Um, and I think that was it for the questions. All right. If that's all the questions, then we're done. Thank you very much. I appreciate your help. Stan, and thanks for hosting. Oh, you're, you're welcome. My pleasure. Goodbye. Yeah, bye.